One is community, like having a really strong community where, you know, there's not that question of feeling like you're asking a stupid question. So I try and say a hundred times, you know, just ask whatever it is that you want to ask. Um, and there, there really are no silly questions and it's a safe space. So there's the community aspect. And then also the content is just created with women in mind as a consumer, which I think a lot of the production related content isn't. And then sometimes you see the language that's used and stuff as well. It's just, it's, it's not created for a certain type of audience, which can be a bit alienating as well. And, and, and it's hard to describe, you know, what I mean by that, you know, but if it's like a, a bunch of dudes, how would they talk? as opposed to a, a bunch of dudes with a few, like, you know, if it's half and half sort of thing, the conversation would be a little bit different probably, I think. So mm-hmm. just keeping that in mind when creating content as well. And then the third thing was just to uh, increase the vil- visibility um, of role models uh, or, you know, women that are doing amazing things in this space just so that people getting into it don't need to feel that there's no one like them doing this because that you know there are and um but sometimes it's just hard to find so just showing people that there there are people like you succeeding in this field so there's no reason why you shouldn't yeah totally i mean i think that's like the the biggest thing is the visibility thing i feel mm. like the you know when you normalize seeing women and and non the non, non cis male yeah. I, I don't know um when you only see like white dudes or just dudes in general producing mm. it gives you know the impression that it's like oh this is a this is a male industry but mm. when you see diversity and all different kinds of people doing it mm. then it's like hey okay i can you know see myself there if you know if i'm not just a regular like a, just a guy mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and uh that seems to be the big thing and uh i guess like normalizing having non men in the in the industry is the the secret to women and uh non males feeling powerful enough to just do it by themselves mm-hmm. or not to feel like they're asking just silly questions or yeah. maybe they're not going to be part of the club I mean, even as like a, a guy, I found like the forums when I was getting started a decade ago intimidating. Like I, mm. you know, I'd ask a question in, uh, you know, gear sluts and be like, oh, who's going to who's going to attack me now? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, oh, those forums can be brutal, <laughs> even for, for anyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. sure it's like even so much harder, you mm. know, if you're not, you know, not a dude. Yeah. Uh, in that sense. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. I think that's important work that you're doing. Yeah. I think also as like the technology becomes more accessible, I guess it's easier to see more people that haven't, you know, they're not part of the old boys club doing the work, you yeah, know, yeah. there's this barrier to entrance, right? Because of that. And totally. I feel like that's, you know, we have technology on our side now to mm. kind of expand the pool. If that mm. makes sense. Yep, for sure. I will say as well that I think the the work that, you know, people like you do as well, uh, Ben, I think is really important as well, because there's no, it's not useful for us um, as women to be talking about this to women in a group of women sort of thing. So like, even with our courses as well, like, even though we're called music production for women, mainly for like Google SEO reasons of what people might put in Google, (laughs) um, but it's not only for women. So we have had men in some of our courses as well, which I think is excellent because we need to include them in the conversation to, to actually make a change. And um, having conversations like this to an audience, you know, to your audience, which I'd say probably more men than women, hopefully um, will just help some people see the other side as well. So I think... Right. It's like uh, you don't want segregation, right? You want... No, not at all. You want everything interacting together, right? One big pool. Yeah, exactly You don't want to have the the men's club and the women's club. No. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for... Yeah, thanks for that. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm curious, like, you know, as a fellow podcaster, mm-hmm. uh, I'd love to hear about your thoughts on podcasting and how that's been going for you and how that's kind of maybe helped your organization. Yeah, sure. So I started podcasting mainly because, like, five people told me to within a month. They're like, you should have a podcast. Like, so many people said that. And I was like, oh, another thing to add to the the list, you know? Um, right. How much content am I making? Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and you know, like you were saying of, 
you didn't start this to to run a business and and I was like I didn't start this to like be a huge content creator and that's what I feel like I'm doing all the time now I thought maybe let's just start this and just see how it goes and then it kind of became a way for me to talk to the people that I admired most (laughs) in the industry you know like yes um yeah and then people rarely seem to say no, um, you know, high profile people that maybe you wouldn't have reached otherwise. And they seem pretty happy to, to share their knowledge, uh, in the form of a podcast. Uh, as Podcasting a is the, se- is the secret sauce to meeting people. Yeah, <laughs> <really> actually. <laughs> so, so yes, it, it kind of, uh, I, I started enjoying it because I was talking to all these amazing people and learning as I was, uh, as I was running this podcast as well. I think it's great. And now we have people um, joining our membership and everything through the podcast as well. So there's a few people that that say they found us um, on the podcast, which is excellent. And uh, I think if you can get someone else to do the stuff that you don't like, which I, I'm all for getting other people to do the things that you don't have time delegating. to delegating, delegating. Thank you. <laughs> this is, this is, I'm, I'm in the year of delegation in my life. I'm, I'm trying to delegate things. It's been very hard for me. <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard, especially, you know, when you care about something so much, it feels so close right. to you. And there's always this thing going in your head of like, no one can do this better than I can. Um, right. but it's not, it's not actually true. So I'm all for delegating. And I, I edited, um, the first two or three episodes, I think. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like it's taking way too much time. It's not generating any revenue of of any sort at the moment. And I was like, I just don't have time for this. And then I found someone that, uh, that does our editing and he's, excellent. I don't have to think about it. I just send, send the files, get it back and it's pretty much done. I'll have another listen through and make some final edits. Um, so that's really reduced the the pain, (laughs) uh, you know, the painful (laughs) part of running a podcast, but the rest of it, I'd say, you know, is, is actually is pretty fun and, um, and isn't too, um, taxing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I'm 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 I've been delegating the editing of my podcast recently o- yeah. over the last month or so. Yeah. And it's 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 been great because I'm able to kind of enjoy doing the podcast and the interviews and mm. chatting and and that don't have to like spend every Sunday morning, you know, for 4 hours editing, you know, making sure everything is or 3 whatever, however long it takes. So long. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it. T- yeah, it was taking me 3 4 hours as well and I was like this is too much. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's important to, 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 I mean, when you get to a certain stage, you need to start to delegate. Sometimes you have to do everything yourself. I mm. think at the beginning, it's hard to know. It's hard to know when that, uh, when you cross over that threshold of like, okay, this is, this is time that I could be, you know, better used, you know, better used for, you know, working on, you know, a mix or yeah. something else that I need to do mm-hmm. <laughs> versus, but it's uh yeah the whole content thing is is so interesting and it's 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 frustrating because like you know at the end of the day like we don't necessarily want to be doing content but we have to be doing content yes and uh i'm the more i'm thinking about it's like a podcast isn't even really enough like i probably need to get some youtube videos and get some cross pollination happening Mm -hmm. i feel like you can't just go down one one rabbit hole you have to kind of go down a lot of them (laughs) exactly (laughs) exactly which is rough yeah, like actually a, a couple of hours before we were uh, recording this, I, I was, I've been thinking how much we need to get on TikTok um, with MPW. So I spent a little bit of time like watching some videos of people that are doing really well on, on TikTok. And I was just so overwhelmed. I had to take a break and just like before this podcast, just, just kind of clear my head because I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't, I can't do <laughs> deal with another content platform that you have to think about. Um, but yes, I, I, I totally understand that uh, frustration. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, working on your own productions and, and how that goes for you. You know, I've noticed like you have very ethereal productions, lots of reverb, big spacious spaces, uh, spaces, Where's my English today? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, you know, how you produce your own music. How, how, do, how do songs start? Let's start with, like, how does a song start for you? You know, does it start in the DAW? Does it start somewhere else? Where do, where do your songs begin? Yeah, I feel like it's 
different every time. Like sometimes I'll just kind of write with a, a pen and a paper and nothing else and just record things on voice notes on my phone and then go from there and then have like a bit of an outline for the whole song before I even sit on, on DAW. Or sometimes like uh, Hover, which is a single that I released recently, that started from a, a splice sample that I found that I just loved. Um, so I just started kind of sampling that and chopping it up and doing a few different things. And yeah, it, it, the sample runs like almost throughout the whole song and that gave me the idea for that song. And other times uh, it's been kind of maybe learning something new on Ableton that I'm like, oh, you know, let me learn how to use, uh, you know, a, a particular VST, like go more into detail on that or something like that. And then that will sometimes turn into a song or I think it's different every time, but I think it very rarely for me happens when I sit down to be like, I'm going to write a song today. <laughs> You know, I, I'd right. love to be one of those people because I think some people have a really good uh, routine in in setting time aside to write and to create a song, um, but it doesn't seem to work for me that way. Yeah, it doesn't work for everybody. Mm. We can't all be John Lennon, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, so, so the DAW is pretty. In, it seems like it's pretty integral to your creation process. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. I guess. I guess so. Um, yeah, I think a lot of fun can be had in just experimenting with um, what what the door can do. Especially, I feel like being open to mistakes and things going wrong is is really great for the creation process, which I think happens a lot more when you're starting out and you don't really know what you're doing and you're just putting random things in different places and you're like, oh, like right. I, I wasn't expecting that to happen, but that's cool. <laughs> um, it's like good to be naive sometimes, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> so I sometimes feel like I wish I forgot a few things so that you, you can be more open to mistakes. Uh, I, I feel like that was a really fun part um, in the early journey of just uh, just playing around and not having any idea where you're going to end up. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I guess there's a lot of a lot of opportunity for happy accidents on any DAW and, um, and, and yeah, I, I definitely had some fun with that on Ableton. It's definitely integral, especially as someone who doesn't have a instrument background. I don't really have a music theory background or anything like that. So mm, I heavily, coming from like a singing, a singing background. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So from a background uh, as a vocalist, um, I just, uh, I'm reliant on Ableton for, for everything to create my music and, and especially the, the great things about like MIDI effects that mean you don't really need to have that much theory knowledge and, and stuff and how you can kind of get away with, uh, without that, <laughs> with, with the, the great things that, uh, that media effects can do and the other functions uh, that Ableton has. Yeah. It's, I mean, you could use that as a superpower. I feel like you know, maybe because I come from a musician's background and and have like music theory in my back pocket, I think that sometimes limits me into thinking almost like traditional songwriting. Whereas, you know, if you're coming from like, you know, the DAW perspective of like, you know, what can Ableton do? You mm. can kind of come up with all these new sounds and new ideas that are harder for someone like me to kind of wrap my head around. You mm. know what I mean? It's harder for me to kind of get into electronic music because I come from this more traditional background you yeah, know what I mean yeah, yeah so we, sure. we kind of get caught in our own you know preconceived notions and and how we think about music and yeah so it's I don't know I guess we've got to work on like kind of like you were saying with the night being naive mm -hmm. sometimes that was really fun yeah you know and you're able to kind of come up with new ideas I feel like we need to figure out ways to be naive again you yeah. know <laughs> and uh and, and find that kind of spontaneity and break out of our our thought patterns and, and find new, what, what, what this is making me think about, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'd be good to find a way to have more of those happy theory and, and sound accidents. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's gotta be ways to, I don't know, set up your DAW so that it seems naive again. You know, I don't know. Yeah, well, like do. there are some things, especially in the Live 11 around like 
you know, randomizing things and stuff, which I, 